welcome to Concrete Moss Grab More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with another installment of Curves Boot Camp. And today we're going to do some hand sewing. We're going to leave the sewing machine over there and have just some fun with a few little scraps, some pins, a scissor, needle thread, and a thread conditioner. But first I want to talk to you about Emma Jones Vintage Sewing. Now Emma has done, I followed Emma pretty much since she started her channel and it's just wonderful how lovely her stuff is. She does a lot of English paper piecing and a lot of her stuff is so much fun. So you gotta go check her out. I put in the, her YouTube channel in the show notes below. Also, uh, we have a Facebook group. Now, our Facebook group is growing quite quickly and what we're doing there is we're using the room feature on the Facebook groups. So we're having all sorts of impromptu sew dates during the week and that sew date is open 24 seven. So the members there are gathering and they're just having a lot of fun chatting with other people and they're actually getting to know other ladies. It's, 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 a, it's a unique community of very talented quilters. So if you get the chance to check out the Facebook group, by all means do. We're, I'm not sure when we're filming this whether we're voting or whether we've decided on what our next virtual sew date is going to be on Zoom, but if we have a sew date it'll be in the show notes below with the Zoom link. So come on in, we got lots of little hand sewing to do today. Okay for this we just need a couple of things, right? We need a, a couple of pins and we need um, like a needle and thread, some thread, good thread conditioner, that would be useful with this. I am going to do the red and this one, I'm going to do this one instead. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make our quilters knot. So I've just got um, two pieces. I lay the thread across the needle like that, right? Like just like, you can't see it, just like that. No. Of course I choose white thread. Okay, just like that. Now, we are going to wrap the needle and I'm going to make this big so you guys can see the knot. Okay, so I just wrap it like 10 times or something like that. Normally you only need to wrap it like two or three. And then you pull all the way down and you get a knot that looks like this. Just like that. Right, do you see where that knot is there? No? Okay. Just like that. You get a knot that looks just like that. Oh, oh it's going to be one of these days. There. There. So that's going to prevent your thread from coming out the other end. Now, what I've done is I've, I've made my own uh, thread conditioner. And once we perfect this recipe, I will be releasing it for everybody. But until then... It's kind of like, you know, I prefer to, it's all natural products, but we'll hopefully we'll be able to perfect it soon. And we just give it a couple of runs of thread conditioner. Now, when you're sewing these, you're going to be working from this end, this end here out, because I'm right-handed. Right, so I'm going to sew from my right hand to my left. That's the direction. If you're left-handed, you're sewing your piece like this because you're going that way, right? Now, whichever way is more comfortable for you to sew, right? I mean, okay, if I'm going to do it this way, I'm gonna see where I have to move this up, right? As I'm going around now this is just a plain little simple drunkard's path block. So what you want to do is you want to put your first stitch in and make the tiniest little stitch you can to get both sides, right, at around a quarter inch. Okay. And you want to take another stitch and this is where you're creating your knot. Like you go, you take your stitch, right, tiny little stitch. Okay, then you go around and under from the needle end, from the eye end, and now this is going to create a little knot for you, right? Now, one, one hand over knot, two hand over knots, 
There we go. Now, now my thread's probably a little long. Now, another thing I like to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to mark my halfway point and my quarter point. Just like that, just by finger pressing that little bend in there. So now I can see, you know, where the four points I need to match up. But I'm also going to do that on this side. Okay, because that makes this a whole lot easier to do. So I'm going to go to my half, and then I'm going to my quarter. And when you finger press like this, this is easy to, easy to take out with an iron, when you iron your block at the end. Okay, so now I'm going to go, so from right to left, now I'm just going to take just a few little stitches here, and I'm just going to take, you know, small stitches, as small as you can, and you're only going to work like an inch at a time, or like half an inch at a time. So, now you're going to try and take the smaller stitches, right, just like that, and pull along, and go half back, and come up, and now realign it again for the next half inch, right, being careful as to where your lines are for your quarter. So this is where your quarter is. Now you, I'll put a pin in here so you can see it better. Go a half inch down and a half, or a quarter inch down, quarter inch down on both sides. Pin it in place. Okay. Okay, now one side is going to be just a bit bigger than the other. And you just got to work it in. You just massage it in. One, there we go. Two. Just tiny little stitches. And you don't want to go too far on these, right? Without, you know, doing a, a, a stitch back. Okay, so now I'm just gonna adjust, make sure, oops, it's a little out on my quarter inch. I wanna go halfway back through that stitch, halfway. And then, you just want to work little areas at a time. You don't want to work big areas. Yeah, yeah. Okay, halfway. Now I go halfway back. Now I'm going to go all the way to my needle and one stitch past. Okay, there we go. One stitch past. So I should have used black thread. You guys could have seen it better. And now I'm just going to put it down and I'm going to put the next mark here where it's halfway and a quarter inch down and a quarter inch down on that mark, halfway mark. And I'm going to maneuver this so this lies perfectly the way it's going to have to go. There. And you see this is kind of like the red, right, the quarter circle, is starting to get more curved like this, right? So you need, that's a good thing. As you go along, that's an awesome thing because now it's all fitting, right? So we go half stitch back because whenever you draw your thread, you go half stitch back. And you just keep plodding along, taking the tiny little stitches, the smallest you can, because this is going to help your curve look like a curve. And that's why people don't. They, they're, they're okay doing straight hand stitching sometimes, but they're like afraid of that curve because they have to take such small stitches to make it look curved. But it, it works. It does work. And you just keep massaging this in place so your two seams line up. Now, if you're one of those people that draws your lines and your seams are not quarter inch, this is a lot more work when you, you're doing it that way. Like some people, when they teach hand sewing, they, they, they draw around the edge and they give the seam, they do the seam allowance line on both sides. And what happens with that, I probably shouldn't have taken that last stitch. What happens with that is those people they're constantly looking back like this to see whether they're on the line, right? So 
it's kind of a, you know, it's a lot more work and it's a lot more tiresome. But if you can cut it accurately, so you know where your quarter inch is, that's also very helpful. I'm going to try and go all the way up to the pin with my little stitches and maybe one pass. Uh, that's close enough. There we go. So, there. Okay, so we are halfway done. All right. Now, I'm going to just drop my pin there, and I am going to take... Where was the quarter? Okay, there it is. The last mark on my thing, I'm going to line them up best I can. And this starts to come together. Now, there is a trick to these. As you see, now, you see how it cups, right? That it wants to cup. It doesn't want to lay flat anymore. That's perfect. Don't panic. If, that's cup, if that cupping starts to happen, don't panic. And actually, you can put another pin in you know, as it's cupped like this, you can put another pin in there, but I don't because what happens is my thread gets all hooked up into it. So that's part of the reason why I don't. But I just took two scraps out this morning. I figured, okay, I got some serious contrast going on here. We're good. So I'm okay with that. Now, oops. Oh, come on. It's hooked on a... Yeah. Then the thread got hooked on the fabric. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And you notice I'm not putting any knots in except for the ends. But having that little back stitch, half a back stitch going backwards, that's that helps your work. Not from unraveling. I mean if you want to go, let's say, every inch and just put like a you know, the knot that you bring up from around the back, you can if you want. It's not necessary. And I'm just about there. Okay. And basically these are, are really nice. Now, if you find... No, okay. I forgot to tell you the trick. Oh no, I forgot to tell you the trick. Okay. So as you're doing this, if you're finding your stitches are getting too big or it doesn't look curved enough, like it looks like, you know, like the little like, you know, straight edges going all the way around your curve, just re-sew it and try to aim for in between your stitches, right? That'll give your stitching, you know, a lot. It'll, it'll help with your stitching. Now, I'm just going to line up the ends of this and I'm going to mark it like a quarter inch in from the end on both pieces. Yeah, but when you re-sew it, what happens is you smooth out that curve. And you just want to massage this just a bit to get everything all lined up. And half a stitch back, because I've pulled there. We go. Now, you can see from this, it doesn't matter which side you work on, right? Because it's whatever is comfortable for you and whatever makes sense for you, you know. I mean, if you worked on from the other side, I mean, it would be, you still have to line up the edges the way, the way I'm teaching it, right? But like I say, if you're the one that draws a line and your seam allowances are anywhere from three eighths of an inch to a quarter of an inch, you know, now you've got it, it's a lot more work because you're checking to see whether your sewing lines are the same. That's one of the things that uh, turn people off hand sewing. But there. And the last little bit, race to the end. Woohoo! And then we do our big ta da moment. There. And come up. There we go. Now, again with a knot, you're putting in a knot, you're going down into the fabric and then coming up, taking the eye of the thread, the needle, the thread from the eye of the needle, and going under under the front of the needle and like this just pulling it tight that creates your first little knot and I always do two handover knots right after that and we by clipping this thread we're done and we get to our ta-da moment okay 
isn't this block just adorable? This is really cute. Now, if you look, I think you might cameraman to hold this up for you, but if you look along this curve, this curve is really smooth, right? Like there's no squared off edges, right? And if you have, when you're sewing yours and you have little squared off edges, the best thing you can do is just re-sew it and try and aim in between your stitches that you made the first time. That's the fastest way to correct that happening in your sewing. And sometimes and everybody goes, oh, wow, that's a lot of work. But you're learning. Don't, don't worry about this. You're learning. You'll get to this. And like I say, this is just a, a quick little drunkard's path block. Now, here's the reverse. And this, I decided, well, I'll make the one out of the reverse of this right because I had two pieces of crumbs that I pulled out to make this block so I figured okay I might as well make myself another little block now the edges here are a lot tinier so you have it's by the time you get your quarter inch seam in there you know like there's not a lot to hang on to so when it's a good idea sometimes when you're first learning to cut your outside edge a little bigger just so you have something to hold right so and that that's a, ch uh, a cheat from a way back when. So, anyways, I hope you have a wonderful and gentle week ahead and everything is going great for you. Okay, you take care. Bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for j coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now, and that Facebook group is got some very very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know posting pictures and commenting and it's it's been a lot of fun and the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early so you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next after the nosegay sew along we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away so we'll get to sewing those curves and it'll be fun it'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on but we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and, and letting them know that you kind of like our channel, that, that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.